Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Friday, May 10th, 2024. And I'd like to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research 2 channel here on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Alright guys, well, in this video we are going to talk about artificial cranial deformation and how now it seems codified across the board according to the official US government website publishings okay about research done in Croatia the home of Alice Herdliska the guy who is the known eugenicist who laid the foundation for archaeology and anthropology in the United States and in Europe okay that's where he's from okay so and was very influential there and still now all his policies are still well ingrained in all of the um, because you know he's involved in the time when in his, you know this uh, discipline archaeology and it was in its nascency so he had a very strong influence and he was the curator of the Bureau of Ethnology at the Smithsonian so in any case what I really want to do is uh, read to you this article from Gaia magazine about this elongated skull that was found in an excavation in Russia this is from 2019 from Gaia magazine here and uh, by the Gaia staff here and a uh, it looks like the search criterion here has seeking truth, ancient origins, anomalous archaeology. So maybe this is elsewhere where this article appears or the article from Gaia appears. You know, it could be on ancient origins. I don't trust Gaia and I don't trust ancient origins. So show articles that are totally um, alternative um, in nature and then show, you know, completely sort of mainstream academic too. They have no preference, just whatever will pique anybody's interest, although some of the stuff is in conflict, you know, with each other, what people find. So, in any case, let me read you this sort of tabloid piece here from Gaia, which is a piece of junk, okay, and basically it's premised on some assumptions that I don't think have any sort of logical credibility because it doesn't make sense in some other respects so here's the picture of the elongated skull skull remains that were unearthed in Russia and with perfect teeth no less all right, which is anomalous in itself. So, archaeologists uncover another skeleton with an elongated skull. Much another one, they're just all over the place. Much like the Paracas skulls found in Peru. In addition to the noticeably deformed cranium, the skeletal remains show a female with unusually pristine teeth that remain preserved from somewhere between 1700 and 2000 years. Okay, so right away got a problem with this from any sort of scientific analysis perspective. Okay, so the noticeably deformed cranium. Okay, so based on the assumption that any cranium that does not resemble the average human being of today would be one that would be deformed. There is no other explanation for it that's acceptable, I guess because everybody should look like us I, I guess you know but I would imagine somebody involved with the scientific analysis would not you know sort of um, put that so narrowly as accepted you know as a result of uh, you know research in, into these investigations here so I don't see that at all but hey you know 
who's to say, you know, if it's deformed or not. But it seems to be sort of an industry standard now or a discipline standard now that whenever an unusually shaped skull is dug up, then it has to be the result of artificial cranial deformation. And that's all there is to it. There is no other explanation. Everybody's skull dug up from the past anywhere should look just like the standard shape skull anatomy of every human that exists today. So that seems to me to be a sort of anthropological bias built into this right away that I don't like. All right, so anyway, let's go on with this, you know, tabloid junk piece. I hope they're not going to ask me for my email address again so they won't let you read the article unless you put your email address in. It kind of sucks. The remains were discovered at a 4,000 year old settlement known as Arkham in the Russia's Chelyabinsk Oblast. The site, I'm sure I butchered that. The site is referred to as Russia's Stonehenge due to the remains of a monolithic structure that once stood there, which has become a mecca for pagan psychics, astrologers, and clairvoyants. So all these freakazoids, okay, the Russia's Stonehenge, and there's a monolithic structure that once stood there, but I guess it's not there now. Okay, but people still go there, even though whatever supplied the energy there in the area is gone. So, no, but there's remnants of it, there remain, you know, whatever. It's a kind of stupid, you know, inquirer type article here. It's nonsense. The arrangement of the structure at Arcane was believed to have been used for astronomy, but in some instances, visitors have described strange magnetic anomalies, unexplained lights, and even hallucinations during visits. Arcane and the Ural Mountains in general have also become a hotspot for UFO sightings, attracting throngs of seekers hoping to catch a glimpse of the unusual aerial phenomena. Okay, so they gotta add this into it, this very scientific article here. We're gonna add that in too, because you know, they cover articles about that and whatever, it doesn't matter, but you know, they're gonna use mainstream, you know, mindset to, uh, you know, explain these things away, whoever it is, is the you know, Gaia staff doing this. All right. In the past, the unearthing of elongated skulls tended to elicit speculation and headlines describing their discovery as evidence of aliens. But the practice of using wooden boards and wraps to intentionally stretch the skull of a child is a well-documented practice. In fact, a parent could even shape the skull of an infant in such a fashion simply by massaging it when the baby's skull was soft and tensile. So, you're going to Squeeze your baby skull. I like to see people do that today, and you don't think that causes discomfort to the child and everything. So, look, I more problems I have with this. All right, so the evidence of aliens thing right away. Okay, and here's the problem that I have with this article mainly. All right, so whereas they dispel this thing, this evidence of alien thing, which I agree with, one hundred percent. They promote the idea of the artificial cranial deformation, which I do not support. Okay, so they're sending you, you know, away from one rabbit hole and say, hey, come down this other one about artificial cranial deformation because we're going to get into it a little bit in a more scholarly article from the United States um, official government website. Just a few things here. I want to shorten this up because I'm tired and I want to go home. My little uh, baby feral cat is a female. I, I had kittens and is trying to be a good mom and comes and bothers me during my recording these videos. And I, I got to feed her because she needs to eat all the time so she can keep feeding her babies the, her milk. So in any case... Let's go back to this nonsense. But of course, this hasn't stopped tabloids from continuing to publish fantastic headlines calling newly unearthed or longer skulls alien-like. And the latest discovery is no exception. Okay, so I think they're taking a direct jab at Brian Forster, and I don't blame him because I took a jab at Brian Forster, and he, I was talking directly with him. 
on one of his live um, presentations, and he was answering back in the um, you know in the chat, and you know I'm I'm like right, you know showing one of these museums down there in Peru where they show an elongated skull, and then next to it an artist a sculptor's rendering. Of, of you know, so I guess a reproduction of the skull, and it's an alien. Now I'm like Brian, what is this alien crap right next to the skull? This can't be a more terrestrial version of this. I mean, obviously they found the mummies and everything that look like aliens, okay? And this whole notion of aliens with cone heads and all kind of stuff comes from the 20th century, from all these. Pulp fiction magazines from like the 1930s, amazing stories and all kind of stuff. Okay, that's where it comes from. It's not like factual or anything like that. It's ridiculous. So, in any case, they're these people are taking it more seriously than I ever do. Okay, so in any case, this is nonsense anyway. The, the other rabbit hole. Stay away from this one, but calm down, hours over here, because this makes more sense. Researchers believe the skeleton is unconnected to the original arcane civilization as radiocarbon dating placed it at a significantly earlier date. So it's significantly earlier, okay, than whatever culture they're thinking about or whatever, but they're going to reckon everything to it, I'm sure, because if it goes back to a significantly early date, they probably don't know anything about it. The ancient woman was believed to have belonged to the Sarmadi tribe that inhabited the southern Urals, believed to be, okay, so but believed to have been so you know you have to you have to look at these phraseology that they're using here this is not you know this does not connote a, a definite knowing of fact here just you know just opposing this all right and here are more pictures of the skull okay and i can tell just by looking at it that it has more volume within the cranial wall than any average person today okay just right off the bat I can see it I don't have to really be an expert at it or anything but let's look at this here cranial deformation began when while a child was still an infant but no one is quite sure why ancient cultures conducted this practice which is conducted all around the world some speculate that it is a way to achieve a more masculine look for for males, but this wouldn't explain the elongation of the recently discovered female skull. The, the, more wide, mo, the most widely accepted answer is that it would believe to be an indicator of higher social status. Okay, so this is going to be relative to the Adena and Hopewell culture, where the Adena were the ruling class, similar to the Watusi in the 20th century in Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, so you know they are a, a tall stature with sort of different shaped skull type skull morphology and they were the ruling class over their subjects of average sized people the Tutsi and I showed you a travel um, film of it that was made in 1939 to show these people and their subjects okay it was all right there in black and white you can see it all okay same dynamic same social dynamic going on all right, as the Adena and the Hope Wall. All right, and they had high vaulted cranials with the most volume, the most cubic centimeters of brain tissue of anybody that ever lived in the past. Okay, and in the next scholarly article, they attempt to explain all that. Okay, they accept, attempt to explain the various different types of configurations of skulls that were all created by. Uh, artificial cranial deformation because that is the only answer and elong and elongated skulls or their depiction in ancient civilizations can be found all over the world dating back to ancient Egyptian pharaohs such as King Tut Nefertiti and Akhenaten meanwhile similar skulls have been unearthed in a multitude of disparate areas across the world including England France Peru and parts of Africa everywhere as a matter of fact some proponents of the ancient astronaut theory believe elongated skulls when an attempt to emulate the look of ancient extra of an ancient extraterrestrial race that visited our ancestors but no one knows for certain still the practice becomes interesting especially when you throw Gaia's 2017 discovery of several anomalous Peruvian skulls okay so 
they show, you know, they're talking about the Peruvian skulls in this article of theirs that look similar to um, these over here. Okay? So, I can tell you right now, without being an expert, and I'm sure you can too, because you're pretty smart out there. Look at this skull right here, and you can see that it obviously has more volume, more volume in the cranial wall than an average person's skull. Okay? And as Brian Forster's talked about, and I've talked about, is that you cannot increase the volume when you deform somebody's skull. The volume remains exactly the same. As the skull takes a different shape, yes, but the amount of volume within the skull remains entirely the same. Okay? You can see the people where they actually have black and white photos of these people with the cranial deformation. This seems very exaggerated, but when this person grows up to the adult, it's going to look like this, okay? That's more of a size and sh and closer to the shape of this, only slightly different, okay, than this type of shape right here. You can see it's more pointed up here in this shape of the skull, more like this pointed one here, right? But again, you know, these are evidence of actual artificial cranial deformation. Right? But you cannot increase the volume. See, this is where the problem lies. All right, so this is like the Peruvian skulls right here that clearly have increased, they have a different skull morphology, broader jaws, and thicker skulls, etc. So, you know, different than average human beings today. Well, why would that be? All right, so. Anyway, back to the, this thing. Oh, that's the end of the thing. So, okay, so the Peruvian mummies that showed, you know, evidence of maybe based on an ancient astronaut theory and all kind of stuff. But why jump to that? That's an extremely long jump in logic. All right, before you get to that, why don't we talk about some terrestrial explanations for it? All right? We don't need to go that far yet before we explore those possibilities. You see? So before we get to that sort of conclusion, let's start with the ones that provide a more terrestrial answer because that's what we know and that's what we have. Okay? So... This is the sort of across-the-board assumptions made today by archaeologists and anthropologists looking at any skull type that they dig out of the ground that is misshapen in some way by comparison to our own skulls. The only answer is, is that artificial cranial deformation took place and that's it. There are no natural skulls that occur like this. Okay, these are all the result of artificial cranial deformation and again with these things lacking sutures in them, suture lines and all kind of stuff, they claim that they get fused together. Well, what are they basing this on? Did they do an examination of these people here and find that their sutures also were fused together in a way where they can't possibly be visible? without making a, you know, a very detailed study of the cranium on a microscopic level. Okay, so, that's a problem right there, all right? So, besides the fact that when they did craniometric studies of the Adena and other skulls, large skulls that were found okay in the 20th century they found that they had more volume more cubic centimeters of brain material in these elongated skulls types in the americas as well so let's let's read this scholarly article here some parts of it here i can't read it all because it'll take entirely too long all right they I'll just give a synopsis of it. They talk about it. These okay, 
So this is official National Center for Biotechnology Information by the National Library of Medicine and official website of the United States government who has accepted this um, report from Croatia based on the um, archaeological uncovering of uh, three skeletal remains, two of which had elongated skulls and according to them evidence of artificial cranial deformation and one did not. And they are all teenagers, so not fully grown individuals. That also presents a problem to them because they can't t determine the sex and gender unless they do DNA studies. And that's where most of the research lies in these DNA studies. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to read certain parts of it out of it for you. Okay, so they did the DNA analysis. So based on these results, we speculate that artificial, speculate, we speculate that artificial cranial deformation type may have been a visual indicator membership in a specific cultural group and that these groups were interacting intimately on the Pannonian Plain during the migration period. I believe what they're talking about is during the time periods when it's sort of like the Bell Beaker people were traveling around Europe, okay, fine, coming out of the steppes and everything else. Okay, with their metallurgy, agriculture, bringing it to these areas and whatnot. Okay, so in any case, let's go on here. Okay, so humans exhibit similarities in cultural practices that span across space and throughout time. One such practice is artificial cranial deformation, a widespread cultural phenomenon performed to denote group and or individual identity, that is to distinguish particular people from others or provide visible evidence of status, nobility, or affiliation to a certain class or group. Okay, so they covered all the bases there. It seems to be that these people with elongated, skull, elongated skulls, people with um, high vaulted cranial skulls like the Adena were the ruling class. And we see this with the uh, Watusi people in Sub-Saharan Africa in the 20th century. Okay, so it's just clear as day that this is the dynamic that is going on. All right, in 20th century and in the Adena Hopewell cultures and most likely in the Bell Beaker cultures in Europe, they're just not admitting it. There's evidence of it at the Brighton Winter Cave and, you know, it, it can't possibly be any other way. There seems so much evidence. If you look deeper into it, you'll find it. I'm, I'm sure of it. All right, starting with the Brighton Winter Cave. Okay, so... They're saying all the different ways that cranial, you know, the many different ways that cranial, artificial cranial st skull d deformation can take place. So different sorts of ways to do it and that would explain all these different shapes and configurations of the skull. So they have to explain it away somehow. Okay, so along this axis it affects the face, it affects this, it affects that. Okay. But listen to this little piece right here, just to explain it to you from their own research, official research. While cranial morphology is affected, the brain enclosed inside the artificial deformed cranium achieves a volume comparable to that enclosed inside an unmodified cranium. So there is no increase in volume from a normal average human uh, skull morphology so no volume increase all right so but in this article they explain away the adena and explain away any other elongated skulls by saying that it's the result of artificial cranium cranial deformation if that is the case then explain to us the increase in volume and they're not going to despite the fact that they say in this article as well Okay, this report, official DNA, archaeo, uh, genealogy, genealogy, archaeo genealogy department or whatever it is. So, you know, they're looking at the DNA and reckoning it to all this stuff. So, listen to this, all right? So, you just heard that. It can increase the volume and the Adena hands down officially have the increased volume so i don't know how they can explain that to way when they just made that statement then the baracus uh mummies and all kind of stuff also measured <clears throat> increased cranial volume 
as well. It's not possible according to them in their own official documentation studies here. So it doesn't increase the volume, but it's measured increased in volume in these skulls. So right there, they're screwed up. Historically, anthropologists have played various classification systems for artificially induced cranial deformations based on external vault morphology, though the definitions of deformation types are not consistent across the literature. So it's not consistent across the literature. And there's good reason for that, because there's all these different skull configurations and they have to reckon it somehow. Everybody should just look just like normal human beings today and that's it. There is no possibility of other humanoids in the past, even though they know about the Neanderthals. Okay, I went over the um, video by Robert Shepard where he introduces us to the lead DNA researcher on the Denisovans. Okay, and how the genetic influence into the um, Asian cultures is there, and said that we're an amalgamation of all sorts of humanoid forms from the past. Okay, they're totally ignoring that. In this, with that having some potential um, relationship to any of this, okay, it can't possibly be, right? So some studies establish unique characteristic categories based on specific observations of the available samples, employing classification types such as posterior flattening, quote unquote, bilobed, quote unquote, and circumferential, quote unquote, or occipital quote-unquote, or coronal occipital, quote-unquote, or occipital parietal, quote-unquote, and circular, quote-unquote. Others emphasize more general morphological types, broadly comparing the anteposteriorly deformed type compared to the circumferentially deformed type. Both of these broad groups contain subgroups of erecta and oblique types, referring to the orientation of the deforming pressure, and therefore to the position of the occipital plane in relation to the facial plane. Specifically, the erect type deformation causes the occipital bone to take a di direction perpendicular to the Frankfurt plane, while oblique type deformation causes the occipital to take a direction oblique in relation to the Frankfurt plane. Okay, so this whole combo, this covers all the bases for all the different skull types and everything. They're all results of different types of cranial deformation that created all these different skull types. Okay, that they have no idea why these people are doing it. Okay, meanwhile, all these different skull types, but you know, they, they, they have to cover all the bases. But where are all these other skull types? We only see these elongated skulls. And everything. If there's evidence of others, we'd like to see them. All right. So they talk about German people having many of these elongated skulls and that was found I went over this on my other channel okay so while some early studies suggested that the deformed skull shape was initially a visible indication of nobility and later became somewhat of a trend quote unquote Molnar and colleagues more recently proposed that the custom of ACD in this region might be an indication of the social status, like the ruling class, for example. Okay, that's how they're beating around the bush talking about it. Okay. So, and again, they're looking at adolescents. They're not fully grown. So, if they're going to look at the um, volume of the cranial cranial vault okay this might be right in line with average cranial vault volume of any normal human being because they're children still they're not fully grown okay so some things don't make sense to them whatever it's the DNA analysis okay so let's look at the results here Okay, so they're talking about these 14 year old to 16 years old, three skeletons they looked at, two had this skull elongated and one did not. The skeletal remains were relatively robust, which is a euphemism for larger, larger. It's not that they were robust like coffee, okay, when you're brewing coffee it smells robust, right? Nice, okay, it's not that. This is a euphemism for bigger, larger, right? And that can't possibly be, all right? 
because of this. All right. How many subspecies of Homo sapiens are there? Currently, Homo sapiens sapiens is the only widely accepted subspecies of Homo sapiens, and the necessity of this designation remains a matter of debate, since traditional taxonomic practice subdivides a species only when there is evidence of two or more distinct subgroups. So, we're accepted subspecies, but there's no concomitant data to support this. Okay, so it's based on flimsy evidence to begin with, okay? A flimsy perception and determination to begin with, all right? But it says right here that the only widely accepted subspecies, well, whether you're a species or a subspecies, I hate to tell you this, but according to um, uh, the um, zoological um, discipline, all right, all these creatures of one species are relatively the same size. They're none of exaggerated sizes, like there is in, in sizes and shapes. Okay? There are none of exaggerated sizes and strange shapes among these same species of fish right here. Okay? There's not one size of a whale and one size of a minnow and weirdly shaped. Okay? Same as a herd of cattle. Okay, you see a herd of cattle. It's nice. All right. All right, it's talking about drones herding cattle. Okay, so when you see a herd of cattle, okay, are they all different sizes? You see one that's huge and one's just like pygmy size? No. All right. You don't see that with a flock of birds. You don't see that with bison. Okay, here's a bunch of bison. Okay. How many of our are exaggerated size, like Shaquille O'Neal, as compared to me at an average size of 5'8"? Okay. That's not happening in animal species, folks. Whether it be a species or an animal subspecies. Alright? All the same relative size. Not exaggerated sizes. Hot, bigger and smaller. Not different shapes and sizes. Okay, all the same size relative to shape and size. Okay, so there's a problem right there, and they had to, uh, uh, you know, amend the um, history of it of height and growth in Wikipedia to mention that well, there were people of different sizes in the past. So just don't think everybody's of one size in the past. So there's these people of different sizes, but no explanation for the people of different sizes that doesn't make sense see that's why it didn't make sense before because if you're one species even a subspecies you're going to be all within relatively same size limits okay it's not these exaggerated sizes that occur frequently all right there's some areas where there are legends of giant beings in the past where when you look at statistics starting in the 1800s there just so happens to be places where where statistically at that time were among the largest peoples in the world like in you know right adjacent to the Ohio Valley with the Plains Indians okay and the people who are survivors of that okay there's no explanation for the Frisians that's what it says in the article that I read Scientists have no explanation for them. They have different types of skull types and different anatomy, skull anatomy. Okay, it has nothing to do with um, cranial deformation. Nothing to do with it at all. That's just, these were these people who lived, these, you know, back in those times, AD 716. This was their lands over here and they're all huge people with weird skull types that have nothing to do. So here's evidence of people with different skull anatomy that have nothing to do with cranial deformation. I'm sure if you buried one in one of these burial places and they dug it up, they would say, aha, a skull, look, it's weird. Oh, it's obviously a result of cranial uh, deformation when it's not, okay? 
the Frisians, right? The, the the giant people say, okay, so, you know, the Bible people say, hey, evidence of giants. Oh, all those fierce giants in the past, they're cannibals and, you know, you know, fierce fighters, according to ancient origins here and all kind of stuff. Okay, Frisian people voted the friendliest people in Norway and Germany year after year after year after year the friendliest people the gentle giants of so many gentle giants the the men of renown who are these ultra large people but weren't bad were they cannibals make up your mind Bible men of renown really good super good guys and you know the people who gave birth to them super super bad guys you know, all right, whatever. So, in any case, they say they were relatively robust. Okay, so that means that these children were robust, so they were kind of big. All right, so they're talking about the craniums here and whatnot. Okay, these are the results, and then they go into more. DNA and how it's related to it. So it's a bunch of dry mumbo jumbo over here because they have to explain it. We are the only type, but even though we know that people have features from that are are you know um you know bestial from the neanderthals that we are obviously have dna that they discovered in our dna so when people have features neanderthal features that doesn't surprise anybody that's not a problem okay but if people have features like similar to what these old age giants are described as or whatever well they have you know um pretty well standardized in the, in the disciplines now as well every single one of them has got either acromegaly or gigantism it can't be any other way and I have a good friend who has an acromegaly that convinced him that all his health problems will be solved when they remove the so-called tumor from his pituitary okay so he's got this extra growth apparently by his pituitary there all right that somehow he got okay and it's that's what's causing all the problems in his life this is a guy who can curl 200 pound dumbbells all right it's incredible how strong he is it's just amazing all right and he has acromegaly just like Andre the Giant did all right no reports of bad health from Andre the Giant until, you know, he passed away prematurely. He probably, his heart couldn't carry around that weight forever and ever in this, this, you know, hard gravity that we got here. All right, but in any case, you know, my friends got this sacrament and they're going to remove the growth. And I'm like, no. I'm like, this is what's left over in you from the Giants. So all you have to do is switch your diet. It's what's going to, food is... Food is medicine, and especially what these giants must have been eating in the past because they have perfect teeth. And the same as these elongated skull people, perfect teeth. All right, so there's something to be said about that. All right. So, anyway, guys, you just heard the whole convoluted mess there. about all these different categorizations of it, all these different classifications of it, is a clear indication that it can't be, statistically speaking, that every single one of these skulls with odd shapes is a result of some sort of modification as a result of um, artificial cranial deformation, okay? The sutures and how they're fused and all kind of stuff like that. They have to give these explanations to explain these skulls, okay? But the increased volume there is no explanation for uh, by their own words, okay? Just like these skulls were measured craniometrically and found to have additional volume above and far beyond again and again in these skulls. 
that were not average size as uh, you know relate to t today what our average size much more brain capacity okay it, much more capacity in their cranial vault so listen it just it doesn't make sense what they say okay as, as the data shows okay it doesn't bear it out okay you have this excess cranial space there that shouldn't be there okay there's no way of doing that by cranial deformation it's all remains the same size no matter what you do to it as I've been saying over and over and over again all right that's what they say about people with normal us but people like us deforming their craniums but that's not what was happening with these people all right that was occurring naturally with the, all these different humanoids from the past like Neanderthals and Denise Finch that had bestial, bestial tails okay so that's a problem right the Denise Finch had tails right where was that from all right and people are born with that today tail so they don't know what they're talking about it's completely confused here it's obviously they're making a real effort to sort of dispel any notion of any sort of other humanoids existing in the past it just can't possibly be every single one of these skulls from around the world that have any sort of anomalous shapes or whatever it is are all going to be the result of artificial cranial deformation when some people propose the theory that the peoples from at least in historical times that we know of that the, the foreign Ukrainian were trying to emulate the natural appearance of whoever their ruling class was which were these people with these odd shaped skull forms which I read about it many times it had all very odd skull types over and over again but obviously not human and inexplicable like Lloyd Pye's star trial skull again with aliens as the only explanation see I don't agree with any of that stuff there's a terrestrial explanation it's just that the past is far different than we think and how they think and it's quite obvious by all this nonsense that they put out here they're trying so hard to convince us that any sort of aberration from the norm is obviously the result of cranial deformation and nothing else okay guys so anyway think about it and come to your own conclusions but there's no way that according to their own standards that the cranial um, volume could increase by artificially deforming the skull all right guys so anyway i hope you like that a little piece there and uh please do like the video and if you're not a subscriber please do subscribe we discuss some interesting topics here all right guys anyway bug hat seven signing out peace